Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. Ntolisi, the son of Nube, is my name. And uh, I'm here just to respond to some questions that I'm getting from Zimbabweans, uh, especially those that are based in the diaspora, uh, concerning the push for fresh elections back home, concerning the push for the cessation of hostilities against uh, perceived opposition supporters in the country uh, you will remember and that i have uh, in the past few weeks been posting uh, commentary and uh, information regarding the push for zimbabwe uh, to have constructive dialogue by a group called zimbabwe intercessors movement uh, so this is what i want to talk about because people have been asking if this uh, because you will know that we have been posting that they want to organize protests in Botswana, in Zambia. And now uh, people have been asking that uh, it seems to have taken a lull, especially after reports that the Bishop uh, Nyamakanga uh, was called in for questioning by members of the Central Intelligence Organization, that is the President's Office, uh, pertaining to the planned protest or planned uh, yeah, planned protests, let me say. So the bishop later came out and said it wasn't true that he was uh, abducted, but it was true that he was questioned because some people, apparently people that are around him, uh, somehow misled the security apparatus into believing that he wanted to organize uh, violent protest and that he wanted to unseat the government and to create a scene in Zimbabwe ahead of the such summit that is coming next month. So he said that he's going to be uh, guided by the spirit and then he was going to come back and announce his way forward. I haven't been in touch with any member of the Zimbabwe intercessors movement uh, and I don't know as it were what exactly the stage they have reached but I'm told by a, an unverified uh, a report that they are now targeting to go to Zambia uh, maybe today or tomorrow to continue with their peaceful protests uh, against Zimbabwe assuming the assuming the, the sad chairpersonship next month uh, so I don't know if the bishop is involved in this I don't know if it's the Zimbabwe intercessors movement pushing this but I'm told that there are some protests that are organized for Zambia uh, to try and stop Zimbabwe assuming the, chair, the chairmanship of the SAD next month is, is expected. You know that the SAD has chair, chairmanship rather is, uh, a, 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 is held on a rotational basis. So they want Zimbabwe to be prevented from assuming that because if it happens, it means that President Emerson Mangakwa becomes the chair uh, of the SAD for the next two years. And they are saying that Zimbabwe is not at a position right now politically which can allow it to chair a body like that. But I don't know uh, what uh, is the main uh, outcome they are anticipating, although what I know is that the SAC will not change its stance on Zimbabwe becoming the next chair because that would create a diplomatic rift that would create some fissures within the organization itself because it will not be only Zimbabwe opposed to that but it will be several other countries that are friends with Zimbabwe because the basis uh, of those protests or the basis for the, the, the calls for Zimbabwe not to become such chair uh, doesn't hold water because we have had countries that are considered to be worse off than Zimbabwe holding that particular position. And you will know that being chair doesn't mean that the, the, the country is now bigger than the others. So they can still call Zimbabwe to order, even if it will be holding the chairperson or the chair uh, of the SADC, even if President Emerson Nangakwa would be the chairperson of the SADC. And the argument that the Zimbabweans must be forced into fresh elections doesn't also hold water because it is based on the report of the SAT uh, election observation mission that is in the show which uh, stated even though it highlighted a number of uh, cross irregularities in Zimbabwean elections also stated that some aspects of 
the elections did not meet the SADC protocol on organizing free and fair elections. It didn't meet the standards. But they didn't say that Zimbabwean elections are nullified. They don't have the mandate. They don't have the power to nullify the elections. Neither does SADC or the AU. So at the end of the day, it becomes uh, a call for us to say, Zanu PF, you have uh, taken over or you have continued to, to reign in the country, you have continued to govern. Can you stop then abusing that power to target members of the opposition, to target officials of the opposition, to target ordinary Zimbabweans going about their daily lives? Because at the end of the day, we hear that there are some hostilities towards members of the opposition and perceived uh, activists of the opposition. You know about the arrest of the 79 who include uh, Senator Jameson Timba and his son who was 16 years old. Uh, you know about the number of other opposition activists that have been arrested and arraigned before the court for a number of charges that the opposition itself says are cooked up there are also allegations that some people have been abducted, others have been beaten up, others have been killed in Zimbabwe. And these are the reasons why these protests are considered necessary. Uh, we also hear that here in South Africa, there is an organization called the Progressive Zimbabwe Forum. We are yet to interview them, but they have spoken out about the need to hold protests in August at the Zimbabwean Consulate. Uh, you remember them for holding a protest against the astronomical uh, passport fees which led to the government lowering uh, those charges by uh, a few dollars and now they are saying that the 3400 that is being charged for the processing of e-passports in South Africa is still astronomical and they want to protest against that they also want to protest against the what they term the political impasse in Zimbabwe where we have some people saying that the elections were rigged and calling for fresh elections, others calling for dialogue, others calling for national transitional authority. So they also want to protest against that. So they also, in the meanwhile, want to hold a dialogue with the Zimbabwean government to say, of course, you are continuing, but at the end of the day, you are still uh, harassing people, you are still breaching the peace that people must enjoy, you are still uh, impeding on people's human rights. Can you stop uh, because this is not occurring well, especially uh, for those in the international community who want to re-engage with, uh, with the Zimbabwean government. So we will continue to give you more information about this. We hope to hold interviews with especially the Progressive Zimbabwe Forum. We've organized them for an interview. They are yet to honor it, but they have agreed that they're going to come for an interview, but they haven't even yet given us a particular date and time on which we're going to hold this, but we hope to hold it within the next week, that is within the next seven days, to try and find out what exactly it is that they're calling for, the further details, because they didn't have a date when we last spoke to them. So we hope that now they've organized that particular date and time and the pickup points for people to go and attend this. But in the meanwhile, uh, the international community itself has taken note of what is happening in Zimbabwe, and they have issued a statement, uh, one of those organizations that has issued a statement is Human Rights Watch, which issued a statement uh, from its, jo its Johannesburg offices on the 8th of July, that is 2024. Uh, they said uh, the Southern African Development Community should speak out against the Zimbabwean authorities' intensified crackdown on the opposition and civil society organizations ahead of its summit in Harare. Human Rights Watch uh, said that, that is on the 8th of July, the head of state of such 16 members will meet in, on August 17, 2024 in Harare, Zimbabwe for their 44th summit where Zimbabwean President Emerson Nagaka will be taking over as chair of the sub-regional organization. Since assuming power in a military coup in 2017, the administration of President Nangakwa has committed serious human rights violations and shown a, further on, a failure and willingness to institute lasting human rights reforms, violence, intimidation, harassment, and repression aimed but principally at opposition members and civil society activists have restricted civic and political space. Several activists have been abducted and tortured in the past year. The authorities have weaponized the criminal justice system against the ruling parties of political opponents. Opposition politicians have been held in prolonged pre-trial detention and convicted 
on baseless, seemingly politically motivated charges. The government of President Mnangakwa is accelerating its kickdown against legitimate and peaceful activism against of the AUKUS summit, said Alan Ngari, Africa Advocates Director at Human Rights Watch. The Southern African Development Community needs to engage with the authorities to take clear measures to ensure the enjoyment of basic freedoms by Zimbabweans. On June 16, the Zimbabwe Republic Police raided a private home in the Sepapo Harare, their capital, and arrested over 70 people, most of them young, in what can be considered an attack on the right to peaceful assembly and freedom of association. Those detained were charged with participating in a gathering with the intent to promote violence, breaches of peace, or picotry, as well as disorderly conduct. Their lawyers told the media that the, that the gathering was a barbecue at the home of James Timba, an opposition leader, to commemorate June 16, Day of the African Child. On June 27, while denying, while denying them bail, a Harare magistrate ruled that the detainees were likely to commit similar offences if released. The media has quoted their lawyers stating that the detainees have been assaulted and tortured during their arrest and while in custody. The media has also reported that police assaulted and injured people who were at a court in solidarity with the detained activists. On, also on June 27, at a meeting of his PF party, President Nangawa said he was aware of certain rocky elements within the nation who are bent on patent falsehoods and instigating acts of civil disorder, especially before, during and after regional and world stage events. He said security agencies were on high alert to decisively deal with the so-called rocky elements. On June 28, a statement by Zimbabwe's Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Minister claimed that criminal and opportunistic elements within the opposition, certain politicians and some civil society organizations were attempting to incite disorder and discontent. However, the minister said nothing about the constitutional rights of Zimbabweans to peacefully protest or the government's domestic and international human rights obligations to respect peaceful activism, several women rights organizations condemned the minister's statement as deeply concerning and undemocratic. On June 29, police raided a private home in Harare and arrested five people for halting and sanctioned gathering and agitating for criminal acts in the country. A spokesperson of the five, who are members of a movement called National Democratic Working Group, said they were meeting to organize food disbursements to needy people in the area. On June 30, authorities disrupted a memorial event for an opposition supporter killed in 2022 and arrested several participants. So this is what Human Rights says. Human Rights Watch says. So it says the such should use uh, the AUKUS summit and President Mnangawa's chairmanship as an opportunity to encourage Zimbabwe to put in place key reforms to improve respect for human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in line with the SAD treaty, which requires members to act according to these principles. So this is where we are at the present moment. Uh, I haven't read the whole statement by Human Rights Watch. I left out about three paragraphs because I don't want this to be a very long thing. But also, we will organize to have a meeting with Human Rights Watch, uh, an interview, let me say, uh, with Human Rights Watch to try and understand deeply the situation in Zimbabwe according to what they uncovered uh, in their research. But now, as I have said, there are protests being lined up. Uh, we have not yet been given the clear outcomes that are expected, but what they've been saying, that is, according to the Zimbabwe intercessors movement, uh, is that they want the Zimbabwean government and that is the ruling party and the opposition to meet and discuss, find ways of trying to solve this uh, political log jam in the country. Failure to them uh, arriving at a decision or at an agreement that says uh, the cessation of hostilities is going to begin. They must agree on a national transitional authority. Failure to that, they must hold fresh elections. We don't know on the feasibility of this. We don't know uh, on whether this is going to be uh, successful. But what we need as AVG News is for Zimbabweans to live peacefully, regardless of who is in charge of their country, because the elections have come and gone. We can continue uh, in an election year mood, whether we're in the opposition or in the ruling party. We can't continue that. There is a time when people must be busy building the nation, regardless of which political party they belong to. This is the time for Zimbabweans to start coming together, 
uniting towards building a better future for, for Zimbabweans and for the country uh, as well. So this is what our main concern is, the reported human rights abuses that are said to be continuing. We want them to stop. We also pray that whoever is stalking the flames stops uh, doing that because we know the outcomes of all these things. So this is what we had for now. Uh, we will come back and probably hold a live with you where we'll engage. We know you've got pending questions. We know you've got a number of issues that you want to be raised, the way that you want to see raised or that you want to raise. We will engage with you. You'll be using the comment section meanwhile to raise those. And then when we are live, probably this afternoon, we will then engage with you. With you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.